Happy Halloween and welcome to the Horizon Newscast for the week of October 31st, 2011. I'm Sheila Franklin. With the fall semester winding down, students have begun consulting with advisors and selecting classes for the spring semester. Stephen Allen learned more about several changes being made to academic advising, all to achieve one common goal, retention. With spring classes approaching, students are to expect several advising changes this spring semester. I spoke to Brittany Hubbard about several forthcoming changes occurring with the Academic Success Center and advising. One of these many initiatives include a rebranding and restructuring effort to ultimately increase undecided student retention. Currently in our model, incoming students go into the Academic Success Center and everybody is advised by the Academic Success Center until they meet the qualifications to declare their full major. And we call those pre-students. In our new model, we're going to be putting the pre-students out into the schools and we'll have a center just for undecided. Hubbard explained that this initiative helps pre-students connect sooner with their school, but also assist students who are undecided to find their major and lead them to the career of their choice. Undecided students across the nation are at a greater risk of not graduating. And the longer you stay undecided, the more likely you're taking classes that may not be required for your actual major. This new department replaces the Academic Success Center and seamlessly collaborates with financial aid in a concerted effort to achieve one goal. The end goal is the degree, and you always want to have your eye on that goal. And, and financial aid, we need to help you have your eye on that goal. Accompanying the new Advising Center for Exploratory Students is a more stringent enforcement of satisfactory academic progress as a result of tightened federal regulation. This year, the feds decided that we wouldn't have <laughs> quite so many liberties with that. Any student that's granted an appeal has to have an academic plan. I believe that when those type of students are sitting in my class, they're wasting my time and the professor's time. I'm paying for this. I want to get an education out of this, you know, out of being here on this campus. I know people that manipulate the system and they're, they only do it just to get financial aid or to get the loans. The entirety of the retention project is composed of three components, including the advising restructuring, an additional first year seminar, and learning communities. This is Stephen Allen, the Horizon Newscast. Decided majors that are currently advised through the Academic Success Center will now be advised through the academic schools starting in spring 2012. Students came out to drink mocktails or mock cocktails during this year's Oktoberfest. The annual event held in the Commons area is used to raise awareness about alcohol abuse. Christy Taylor caught up on the festivities. Alcohol awareness was a theme for IU Southeast Oktoberfest. It, we know that it's going to be a growing concern now that they have the uh, residential halls out here. Um, it used to not be an issue for a commuter campus, but that's going to be changing. The IUS committee partnered with Campus Life to present this year's Oktoberfest. Students participated in an anonymous alcohol screening and were also offered candy and prizes in exchange for helpful information on alcohol awareness. Give kids an opportunity, college students, to sit down confidentially, do an online screening so that they can find out if they are drinking alcohol, are they doing it in a low risk manner that they're not putting themselves in jeopardy or the people around them, or maybe they are using it in a high risk manner and so that at least gives that immediate feedback. Um, the screening I thought was just a uh, very standard. Um, it seems like just like the surveys that I would take in high school about alcohol and everything. and would, We had to take one about one every year and I thought that was very good at least for gathering statistics. Students are given resources such as the Save a Life card to help identify the six symptoms of alcohol poisoning. Other activities included root beer pong and mocktails. Students were encouraged to participate in non-alcoholic games that served as alternatives for many college parties. Christy Taylor, The Horizon Newscast. For more information about alcohol awareness in the area, contact Our Place Drug and Alcohol Education Services at 812-945-3400. In IUS sports news, the women's volleyball team faced tough competition against Spalding University. Kayla Smith tells us more about the victory. Indiana University versus Spalding University here for the second time this season in the Athletics Building on Thursday, October 20th. Indiana University Southeast volleyball team ended its two-game losing streak with a 3-1 victory over Spalding University. The Grenadiers defeated the visiting Golden Eagles of Spalding University 3-0 earlier this season. Coming into the match, the team really wanted to beat Spalding University. Um, 
a lot of my girls played with those girls or against those girls in high school, and so they really wanted to beat them, especially after we let them take us five sets our first um, round. So um, winning in four was good. We would have liked to win in three, but it was good, and we're, I'm proud of the girls for that win. The Grenadiers, 20 and 14 in the season, and 10 and 5 in the Kentucky Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, bounced back from their very slow moving start after losing the first set 25 to 12. The volleyball team battled back to take the next three games, 25 to 23, 25 to 21, and 25 to 20. PJ Cockrell led with 10 kills while Katie Johnson had 16 assists for the Grenadiers and was happy with the outcome of the match. Um, I thought we did really well. I was really happy with the outcome. The first game started off a little slow, um, but then we came out and did really well after that. With the Kentucky Intercollegiate Athletic Conference just around the corner, Head coach Drury Prather believes the team can physically win the conference. We um, we still have a lot of work to do uh, mentally. Um, I think physically we can do it. We just have to believe that we can. There are some pretty tough teams in our conference that have beat us this season, so we really have to come ready to play. Congratulations to Indiana University Southeast from the Athletic Center with the Horizon Newscast. I'm Kayla Smith. The Grenadiers return to the Activities Building November 1st at 7 p.m. for the final home match against Oakland City. Senior night activities for the team's only senior, Lauren McCartan, will begin at 6.50. What do you think of when you think about history? For many of us, national history may be what usually comes to mind. However, local history plays an important role as well. As a matter of fact, Jeffersonville was a key location during the Civil War. Ryan Keith tells us the story. The Civil War was the costliest in U.S. history and set up the tide of racism up until the 1960s. Dr. Carl Kramer at the Jeffersonville Township Public Library on October 18th was there to give a talk about the Civil War and its well, the Civil War is important today because it was a defining moment uh, in American history. Uh, there are so many events uh, in th this country's uh, history that still shape the way we think. Uh, the Civil War was not just a national war, but it even touched the local Indiana area. Jeffersonville, Indiana and the surrounding area, being predominantly a river commerce area, it benefited greatly from the war economy. Ryan Keith for the Horizon Newscast. Thanks, Ryan. In the spirit of Halloween, our next story is about a Day of the Living Dead at IU Southeast. The English Club was busy searching for brains as they sponsored a zombie walk to raise money for a local charity. Susan Greenwell bravely got up close and personal with the flesh-eating fiends. Let's get zombified. Zombies of IUS are taking over McCullough Plaza today as they do a charitable zombie walk. Outside of collecting children's books, the zombie walk also included walks through the buildings on campus, zombie tag, and a costume contest. Today, this is the English Club Zombie at Walk, or Zombie Social, as it's been somewhat renamed. I just wanted to do something that was visual and hilarious with the English Club this semester, and I think this is both visual and hilarious. All of the monetary donations and the books that were collected today are going to be donated to Our Lady of Peace Children's Peace Center. I'm a zombie that escaped from a deranged asylum, but you know, you gotta do what you have to to eat some brains, you know. The Walk for Brains has proven to be both a social event and great for charity. This has been Susan Greenwell, Horizon Newscast. Proceeds from the walk will be used to aid literary advancement in children and adolescents who are undergoing psychological treatment. Thank you for watching the Horizon Newscast. Be sure to tune in November 7th for more exciting coverage of all things IU Southeast. Again, I'm Sheila Franklin. Have a safe Halloween and we will see you next week.